Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, we're going to practice doing some import and export of data into Pandas data frames. So we'll learn how to import existing lists, dictionaries, things like that, uh, including a list of dictionaries. We'll also learn to import and export JSON data into a data frame, and we'll learn to write to CSV files as well. So we're going to start with a few import statements here. We're going to use NumPy, Pandas, and random libraries. So I'm going to import those and run that. And I have some already typed up data sets that we'll use. So let's see, here we have data one. And data one, this is called a list comprehension. I hope you're familiar with these, but if not, this is going to give us a 10,000 item list of random integers. And then what we can do is df equals pd.dataframe is our constructor for the data frame. And we just pass in the list. It's that simple. It's just a one dimensional list, so it's just going to have one column in the data frame. So we'll show the first uh, five. We'll just call df.head to show the first five rows. And you can see the rows are automatically assigned an in index, integers just like a list is, right? It starts with zero and it counts up. And then um, it's also given a column number that starts with also integers. So zero here in this case. And if there were multiple columns, it would be one, two, three. So the default column names are also integers just like the row names. Now, to normally you're gonna have names for those columns so that you can reference the columns more easily. And you could also have names for the rows, which we'll, I'll show you how to do that in this video as well. So it's pretty simple to just pass in a list, a one-dimensional list, to a data frame constructor and create a new data frame from it. This could also just as well be a pd.series, uh, but in this case we used data frame. Now in example two, we have a two-dimensional list. Data two is equal to, let's see, now there's a list, and then inside of the list there's also this list. So this is a little more complicated list comprehension, which is not really the point of this video, but you should at least understand how the list comprehension works. So there's a for loop that's going to iterate through the letters of the alphabet that I have here as a string. For each letter in this string, it's going to create a new two-item list with the letter itself, i, and a random integer between 10 and 99. So now we've got our list of 26 two-item lists. So this is a two-dimensional list. And now to create a data frame out of that, all we have to do is df equals pd dot. It's no different. We're still going to use the same constructor, and we're still going to pass in, uh, in this case, data2. And then we can print out df dot head to see the first five rows. And we can see that it assigns the letters as the first column and the random integers as the second column of data. And it also assigns uh, the numerical indices starting with zero for the rows and another numerical index for the, each column. And here we have a two column data frame because we have two item lists inside of our bigger list. So let's look at passing in a dictionary. If you have an existing dictionary and you want to convert that to a pandas data frame, how do we do that? So data three is an existing dictionary of key value pairs. We have model, price, and size, and in each one of these, there's a list of four items. So T65 corresponds to the $1.95 price and 65 inch size. So how do we create a data frame from this? You guessed it, we're gonna do exactly the same thing df equals pd.dataframe and then data3. Uh, we can just print out the whole data frame. And so what it does here is when you ha pass in a dictionary, it uses these keys as the column names. We passed in just a dictionary with three key value pairs where the value is a list of items in all three cases three key value pairs, and the keys all become the column names, right? The title for the column. 
Now in this case though, you might want to put the model number as the call as the row name, right? We might instead of using numerical indices, we might want to use the model number for the index. That would make a lot more sense. So with the small change to this PD dot data frame data three, uh, instead of putting that, we could create a data frame PD dot data frame, and then we'll pass in first argument. This is we're going to pass in two arguments now. First argument is going to be a dictionary. So the dictionary has price and data three price. In other words, it has this and this as our two item dictionary. We just chopped model out of the dictionary. We gave price and size as the two columns in our dictionary. And then the second argument for our data frame constructor is the index. And for the index, we said we wanted to use model, so the model number. And to get that, we just use uh, data3 model. So now we've passed in two arguments to the data frame constructor from our existing dictionary. We picked the model number to pass in as the index. And now when we print out the data frame, what we're going to get is the model number as the row. So what this does, it enables us to access and to um, sort these rows of data uh, by slicing model numbers. For example, let's take a look here. We can do df.loc and then square brackets. Let's say we want everything up to t61. I can do t61. So that gives us everything up to T61. So 57 to 61 is that easy. df.loc and then up to T61. So we can look at more detailed slicing and stuff in another video. It is useful sometimes to have your model number, if you're talking about part numbers, as the row indices. So in data four, uh, we have a list. You can see the outer square brackets here, which is a list. Inside that list, there are three separate dictionaries with height, length, and weight. And then you have a numerical value for the height, length, and weight. Oh, wait, look, the middle one is missing the length. So we'll also see what pandas is going to do when you're missing a number here. We don't have a length. So let's see what happens with this. We pass in data four to our constructor. I'll just go up here and df equals, copy that, and I'll paste it down here, and then I'll put in the four. Oh, let's do this. So our data output looks like this. We have height, length, and weight. Now we passed in data four, which is a list of dictionaries, but it's still using the keys from those dictionaries as the header for our columns. So that's kind of cool. And look what happened to the missing value here. We didn't have a length for the middle item. What happened? Well, it just put not a number there. That's pandas not a number. That's basically a null value. And if we wanted to write this, let's say to a CSV file, this is pretty easy. We have a data frame. All we have to do is type 2CSV. And then we're going to pass in as an argument our file name. So outfile.csv. We can run that. And we're going to see that our outfile looks like this. So if we wanted to read in that CSV file, we could say df equals um, pd.readcsv. You'll note that we're here we're calling df.2csv. Here we're saying pd.readcsv. And then we're going to put the name of the file. So I'll just put this as our argument. And then we put df. So we uh, see that it read it in just perfectly fine, except that when we send it to a CSV file, it actually sent these indices too. And you can see the indices here. So one way to get around that is when we write it to the CSV file, we 
add in here an extra little thing called index equals false, and then it won't write the index. Uh, what we're going to have to do is rerun this. Boom. That makes our data frame back to this, which is what we want. And then we'll rerun this, boom, which sends it to the out file again without the indices. If I reload this, it will not have the indices on it. And then we can rerun the read CSV. And we see when it reads it in, it doesn't have that extra column of indices that it wrote to the output file. So if you want to not write your indices, you can say index equals false when you convert to CSV. Sending a data frame to a CSV file and reading in from a CSV file is really simple. No need for any for loops or any crazy thing. Pandas just basically sends it to a CSV and reads it in from a CSV and loads all the data in as best it can. And if it can figure out what, what goes with what, then it's going to read it in pretty nicely and it's going to populate blank fields with not a number. That's one of the beautiful time-saving features about Pandas. You don't have to iterate through loops and cover every exception and everything else. So if we want to convert a data frame to a string, we have this data frame and we can say, uh, let's call this d4str equals df underscore two string. There's a two string method. Um, oops, let me put a period here, two string, and then we're going to put parentheses there. So then we can print out d4str. And we'll see there is a two string method. It's insert some extra spaces. And then the, uh, these are the new lines. So the carriage returns. It inserts uh, tabs. So these are tab separated. But that's what we get from our two string method. That's the default two string, which you can override if you want to rewrite a two string function. More useful, maybe, is converting it to a JSON string. So it's very easy also to convert a data frame to a JSON string. We do that by just saying uh, data for, let's see, let's call this data for underscore JSON equals df dot to JSON. And that's it. And then we can print that the screen here. So there's our JSON string and you can see it used um, the column names as our top level category for the JSON strings. Now if you don't like that, if you didn't want to use the column names as a top level category, instead let's say you wanted to use 0, 1, and 2, the row names, uh, that's pretty easy to fix. You just put orient in here and then equals and then index. And you see it flips it. It grabs the rows as the top level category for the JSON string. So however you like your data oriented for the output, very simple, very simple. And then if you want to write that JSON string to an output file, you're going to use exactly the same thing here. Uh, let's do that. Control C and then this. And what we really need to do is put in an extra argument here that is the output file name. So let's call it uh, outjson.txt and that. So we don't necessarily have to have this argument that's just helping us to orient the data with rows instead of columns. Um, but that's really all you have to do, df.toJSON and then the file name. If we open up our output JSON file, it's going to look like this. So very simple to write that. It's going to, basically it's writing it as a string, it's a JSON string. We can read it back in as a JSON string if we want and then convert it back into a data frame. So to do that, we would do uh, pd. 
read JSON. And then we'll put, let's see, what's our file name here? Let's just copy this. And you see we get the same thing, oh, except they're switched, right, because we did this. So it's that easy, really, to um, send data out to a JSON file, read it back in, reorient stuff if you want. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.